let me introduce our first speaker here. First speaker is my colleague and friend, Dr. Minakshi. She is a senior consultant in pediatric ophthalmology department of Shankaranetralaya. Uh, she did her ophthalmic residency from PGI Chandigarh as well as another residency at University of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, she did her fellowship from University of Iowa. And her areas of special interest more than the clinical work is ophthalmic education and of course, the myopia control. She has more than 50 publications in peer reviewed journals. She's a very popular teacher and a very, very um, nice uh, person to interact as, as a mentee, if you are, then she is the person to go to. So with that, welcome Dr. Minakshi, you can stop your talk. You can start your talk, I'll stop sharing here. Hi, everybody. Uh, very good afternoon. And uh, thank you, uh, Sumita, for the very kind uh, invitation and introduction. And uh, Dr. TSS, good afternoon, sir. And it's so nice to see all my friends and former students, Preeti and uh, Rohit and uh, Connie Lai and uh, Manju. So nice to see all of us, all of you. And uh, let me start off my presentation, which is about amblyopia. So really this, uh, <clears throat> it's called What's New in Amblyopia Treatment is the title of the talk. And uh, please give me a warning uh, a minute before wrap up so that I will uh, speed up. No financial disclosure. So 800 AD, uh, Tabith Ibn Kurra talked about patching as a treatment and pretty much that's what we're doing today. So one pauses and thinks really nothing is happening in pediatric ophthalmology and strabismus arena. And then when you start uh, looking at uh, data that's available closely to see whether we can uh, garner technology to help us, then we start seeing more and more uh, things that are really available today. So typically, it is not uncommon for us to see scenarios like this, say a 23-year-old engineer diagnosed recently as an isometropic amblyopia who's really outside the uh, ATS guidelines, eight-year-old year, eight who is intolerant to atropine and cannot patch due to evening tuition and tennis classes. Really, what can you do for these uh, patients? So what, what do we have in our armamentarium today? So uh, let's take a look at what all we have. So it all is based on the um, uh, understanding that restoring cortical plasticity and reducing interocular suppression, has, and these uh, have received considerable attention as a therapeutic strategy for amblyopia in the recent times. There also has been this uh, paradigm shift in thinking, saying, why are we focused only on uniocular monocular vision? Why not focus on binocularities? And that what is the fine visual function that we are really after? Uh, so first, let's look at behavioral treatments. And amongst behavioral treatments, we first have perceptual learning which is marketed under the trade name Revital Vision, available in India now. It's really a process where, whereby practicing certain visual tasks leads to improvement in visual performance. The nice thing is it is a non-invasive software-based therapy. Basically, garber patches are the target for visual training. And the way it works is it helps in facilitating the neural connections at the cortical level. Now, that that's how a GABOR patch looks like for those who are not familiar. So it, not, it in, improves not only visual acuity, but also contrast sensitivity. So the GABOR patches, they basically match the shape of the receptive field in the visual cortex and activate efficiency. Now, some of you looking at those stripes may wonder, is that the same as a CAM stimulator that used to be around a long time back? CAM is brief, passive, versus perceptual learning is active and prolonged. Now, um, what do we watch out for? We watch out for these AMPEL study results, which is basically looked at amblyopia treatment through perceptual training in children. And also another study published last year looked at efficacy of perceptual learning based vision training as an adjuvant to occlusion therapy. Uh, this study came from Spain. Uh, the good thing is that the FDA approved Approved and there is a distributor called Encarta Pharma in uh, Bengaluru. The next thing we're looking at is video gaming. 
It's again playing action and non-action video game with the better eye occluded. Again, induces cortical plasticity and improves visual function. Um, just a second. I am in a meeting. Uh, video games induce a reduction of noise and an increase in sampling efficiency. Uh, that is how exactly it works. Uh, the, this was a prescription gaming that was actually um, uh, FDA approved in, uh, by the name of Dig Rush. And if you look at the net, there are so many uh, lazy eye apps, but many of them are more like fun games, really. But it's more suitable for children. So you could want, you know, suggest them to your patients after you've uh, looked at them yourself. What is the problem? Well, it has addiction potential, like we have all seen what happens in the pandemic. Uh, other than that, it's worth try, uh, trying. What about dichotic training? This was like the new kid on the block about five years ago. There was a lot of buzz about it. Again, it's available in India now uh, in the trade name of Binox. It's a novel cloud-based comprehensive binocular vision assessment and management uh, software. And uh, it uh, basically is used for, uh, there are several versions of it. Uh, it can be used as a diagnostic mode as well. Uh, there is uh, visual acuity, contrast acuity, heterophoria measurement, so on and so forth can also be used uh, in this. But what is important for us for this talk is that there is amblyopia therapy, uh, dichotic amblyopia therapy also available with Binox, which uh, can be monitored, uh, which is what is really very good about it. So basically patient uses anaglyph for playing the games. Color saturation of the fellow eye is kept low to facilitate binocular summation. Size and speed of the target improves based on the performance, and it's found to be effective for patients with anisometropic amblyopia and if the angle of deviation is less than 5% diopter. That's kind of what the screen looks like in uh, Binox. And uh, there are several other games so that there is no boredom. And uh, what is good is that it's, a, um, it's definitely worth a try because it focuses on binocular vision and not just monocular acuity improvement. It's already available in several institutes. And there are many studies that came out of the group uh, Birch from Birch et al, uh, which you can look up. The next thing uh, which is available is the virtual reality and is marketed as Rebed, which is a, a dichotic based uh, plus by dichotic based game therapy. And again, it has several modes, anti-suppression, fusion, and virgins therapy. Now, patient's performance can be monitored with the help of tablet by the therapist. And there are seven different games with different levels of training to keep the patient engaged. And you can nice thing is you can also train patients with strabismic amblyopia by neutralizing the deviation, which is a setting that is inbuilt in REMED. That's kind of what uh, REMED looks like, uh, the screen. You can change brightness, contrast, uh, you know, change the angle with the prism, et cetera. And different targets are available as well. And so that's what the monocular percept looks like. And that's what the binocular percept looks like once the child uh, develops binocular vision. Now, what is exciting here is also orthoptic, which has now been really talked about as slowly becoming prevalent. And it's a very proud moment for us because the Dr. Santan Gopal was a uh, former president of the All India Ophthalmological Society. And so his orthoptic is really a magnocellular stimulator and is used to treat different types of amblyopia and in a wide age group and has been followed up for up to six months. There is imp significant improvement in stereopsis, binocular and monocular vision, and these have been sustained even after stopping treatment. That's what the instrument looks like. It has three rows of LED lights and central one is red in color and the light comes on for 300 milliseconds and off for 300 milliseconds. Uh, patients are seated at a distance of one meter. It's con conducted for 30 minutes with both eyes open and with the weak eye only uh, open. So I think this is really worth a try. I've got lots of anecdotal uh, evidence, lots of even my own uh, you know, junior consultants who are working outside, my former fellows, vouch for um, how well orthoptic uh, has worked in refractory amblyopia. So worth a try. What about other alternative therapies? So this liquid crystal eyeglasses, again, there was a lot of buzz, um, better compliance because it's just a pair of glasses. Basically filter from the fellow all eye alternates between opaque and clear. And prospective study showed that it is equal efficacy to patching, but $450 is quite a, a sum of money. Acupuncture has been tried in anisometropic amblyopia. Uh, 
it's a little hard to see how that's going to work in children. And but there is an there is a study that came out of Hong Kong and uh, physical therapy, short term occlusion of the amblyopic eye combined with physical exercise after six brief training sessions, visual acuity improved in all 10 patients. This is again a small case series. So this was again, I think out of Italy, a very interesting study. Uh, what about pharmacotherapy? Uh, pharmacotherapy, the rationale is that dopamine has been found to be reduced in the retina and deprivation sense. So levodopa and citicoline have been studied before and we know what it's used for. Uh, very often the effect was not sustained. That was the only problem. But there are recently there have been other interesting uh, studies. This is treatment of residual amblyopia with donopacil. And the trial closed in Jan of last year. We still don't have the final results. The effect of combined patching and uh, citalopram on visual acuity in adults with amblyopia, which is a randomized crossover placebo controlled trial out of the very um, active group in amblyopia treatment, the Benjamin Thompson group, is again something to watch out for. And I saw this again in a very interesting sub anesthetic ketamine reactivates adult cortical plasticity to restore vision from amblyopia. So a lot of lot of things out there, a lot of interesting um, therapies that are emerging. So amblyopia is a hot field if you're a clinician and, and if you're a researcher and if you're an optometrist, vision science researcher, again, it's a very hot field. So uh, please do watch out for more exciting uh, updates. Uh, this is a very good article in seminars in ophthalmology about emerging therapies by um, the David Hunter uh, group. Please do look for it. It's a very wonderful read. And so uh, it's a fascinating area of research, both in adults and in children. And I thank you once again, APSPOS and All India Ophthalmological Society for uh, inviting me to this wonderful conclave on a lovely Saturday afternoon. Thank you again.